Madonna is an American pop icon, a revolutionary who remains one of the most influential figures in American music and culture. Every time she needs to reinvent herself, she manages to do it um, from the sexy kind of symbolism that she brings with her clothing to this more sophisticated glamour now. Um, I mean, she's, she's ever changing. Madonna is a material girl who made it through the wilderness to become one of the most enduring icons and entertainers of all time. Her fame has endured for decades through reinvention and the fact she refuses to let go of her stranglehold of cool. It's kind of like you see her on stage, but then you also see her on the red carpet or going out to dinner, and she's kind of emulating the people that she's playing in either her music videos or um, in her movies. Madonna has the unique ability to fascinate the media with her music, music videos, controversial publicity, and her sexuality. The way that she's been brought up over the past 30 years in the spotlight, you know, in front of all these millions of people, uh, the adrenaline rush from being at the shows, it'll only spur her on to her next kind of uh, look. There is so much more to Madonna than meets the eye. She is an astute businesswoman and an inspirational mother. Well, to a certain extent, there's the life that I live out in the public, the life that I present to the public, and, and there's hopefully my private life that people don't know anything about. And I think that the only way to maintain sanity, uh, being a person, um, being a public figure or a celebrity, or whatever you want to call it, is to have a private life. And to be very clear, you know, which is which. Madonna is recognized as one of the world's top selling female recording artists. And her name is crystallized in music history. Madonna Louise Sacconi's adolescent years were in the disco era of the 70s, when Diana Ross ruled the charts. Having lost her mother to breast cancer at an early age and enduring a strained relationship with her father after he married their housekeeper, she became a rebellious teenager. Madonna didn't shave her underarms or wear makeup like other girls. She studied hard and got good grades and was determined to be somebody. She was a disciplined dancer who graduated from high school a semester earlier than her peers and won a full dance scholarship at the University of Michigan. She dropped out of college after only two years of study in order to move to New York and further her dance career. She sent her resume and a demo tape to Millennium Records to the attention of Jimmy Lena and was rejected. Lena wrote, the only thing missing from this project is the material. I do not feel that she is ready yet. If it weren't for this rejection letter, Madonna may have been put on a totally different career path. Millennium Records were not a big label. They had a small marketing budget. Eventually, Madonna signed with Sire Records, which was owned by Warner Brothers. Well, she's a rags to riches story. She came here and she came to New York City in 1978, and uh, you know, with thirty-seven dollars in her pocket, and uh, you know, scraped and scratched, and uh, you know, was very and persevered, and uh, you know, became a, uh, a, a, a great temptress songwriter, and uh, she uh, became one of the great performers, and she uh, has reinvented herself over and over again, which is really unprecedented. Uh, and she's sexy, she's a siren, she's a star, she's done movies, she's a legend. She's Madonna. Controversy has always kept her in the headlines. She famously penned the lyrics of her hit single, Like a Prayer, and the music video saw her attached to a crucifix, which shocked many. The Hollywood marriage of 1985 was that of Madonna and Sean Penn. The phrase, opposites attract, was never more appropriate. Madonna was driven and fueled by press adulation and attention, while Penn absolutely loathed it. The union only lasted four years. Madonna's career was going from strength to strength as she set the fashion trends of the 80s. Back in the beginning of the 80s, when she was very first starting, you know, she was favoured for her tutus, little lace gloves, um, wayfarer glasses. 
Madonna's fame and success was not limited to the United States, and in 1987, she took her show on the road. When she touched down at Heathrow Airport in the UK, Madonna mania hit fever pitch. The Who's That Girl tour was Madonna's first world tour, taking her to Asia, North America and Europe. She played four concerts in Britain to over a quarter of a million people. She's fantastic. She's just the best singer around at the moment. The best singer ever. I like her music, but she's such an extravagant person as well. And she's got such an image. The concerts in the UK received positive feedback from critics, praising Madonna for her showmanship and exquisite style. She also won the respect of the English media. I think she's an ambitious woman, and I say that because she's done things very shrewdly. She went to New York to make it from Michigan. She associated with and moved her way through all of the top producers, and thus got a sequence of hit records that to the point where finally she herself could call the shots. Madonna then made her acting debut in the stage play Speed the Plow on New York's Broadway. It was one of the most eagerly awaited show business events of the year. I know that you're frightened. I know what you are, you see, that's what I'm telling you. I'm frightened? I know that you are. Well, it's, it's exciting. I mean, she's, she's a, you know, a legend. She's talented. She's wonderful. Everyone's curious about, you know, what she'll do on a Broadway play, and she's really great. The play was a box office success even before opening night, in part because of the star power of Madonna and acclaimed actors Joe Mantegna and Ron Silver. Advanced ticket sales exceeded one million US dollars. Madonna played the role of Karen, a temporary secretary in a Hollywood film producer's office. The play generally received good reviews during its time on Broadway. It's about uh, two exhilaratingly foul-mouthed, joyously bad-tempered, mean-spirited, cynical guys. And, um, and their sort of adventures with this uh, temporary office secretary, who is uh, Madonna. After the opening night, she was hounded by the press and asked to appraise her own performance. Madonna, how do you feel the performance went tonight? Madonna, how do you feel it went tonight? It went great. But when she fronted up to the cameras inside, she had a more considered answer to the same question. It felt like really good <laughs> sex. <laughs> Sex has been a focal point of Madonna's image throughout her career. One of her most famous fashion statements was the Jean-Paul Gaultier conical corset, designed for Madonna's Blonde Ambition tour. The corset, at the time, was considered very avant-garde and kept Madonna on the front line of fashion trends. Probably her most iconic clothing moment is the conical bra, the flesh tone with the um, black wide leg pants. Madonna has never been afraid of pushing the limits. In 1990, the Independent Broadcasting Authority in the United Kingdom banned her music video, Justify My Love, from being broadcast before 9pm at night. The clip was considered too sexually explicit the music video gained Madonna more free, controversial publicity. Well, I really feel that Madonna has plumbed the depths of hype. It's uh, less of a pop promo video and more of a, a soft porn movie. Um, it's really taking the public for a ride. It's got very little to do with music. What's actually happening on the screen um, is irrelevant to the hum, which is the music in the background. The music itself is extremely good. Um, unless one takes the view that all pop music is appalling, then I don't see that how, how you can take that, how anyone can take that view. I don't think it's an agent for corruption either. I think actually the video itself is a justifiable work of art in its own form. Two years later, she used her sexuality again to whip up another media frenzy, ahead of the release of her ambiguously titled book, Sex. The metal-covered book, sealed in plastic, contained full frontal nude shots of the author as well as graphic sexual fantasies. Demand for the book ran so high 
that one London bookstore decided to open up at midnight on the official release date to get ahead of the competition. The store even employed a Madonna lookalike in a bid to add to the hype. Within days, Sex had sold more than 1.5 million copies, neatly boosting publicity for the release of her forthcoming album, the equally provocatively titled Erotica. Under a court order, Madonna testified in the trial of a man that was accused of stalking her. She identified Mr. Hoskins as the man who came to her estate and threatened to slice her throat from ear to ear if she didn't agree to become his wife. She was reluctant to testify because she didn't want to be in the same room as the man who threatened her life. It's a constitutional right of my client to confront the witnesses against them. Uh, it's plain and simple. It's, that, that's almost a no-brainer. During her painful testimony, Madonna said, I felt incredibly violated and even more frightened, adding she suffered nightmares as a result of the threats. Well, she obviously wasn't too happy about being in the courtroom. Uh, a couple of moments when describing some of her fears and nightmares that she claimed resulted from what she believes to be the threat the defendant posed against her, uh, she appeared to be on the verge of tears. Uh, admittedly, once or twice, she was uh, a little snippy. Uh, the judge told her to be specific at one point, and she responded, I was being specific. Uh, but other than that, uh, it was a very subdued Madonna. And she did testify that as she sat there, she was still frightened uh, of Mr. Hoskins, the man she claimed stalked her and threatened her as he uh, sat perhaps 20 feet from her. While she's enjoyed runaway success in almost every aspect of her creative life, it's fair to say that Madonna's assault on the big screen has been somewhat less effective. She rebounded her acting career with a Golden Globe winning performance in the big screen adaptation of the musical Evita. Still, even that triumph brought its controversies, with protesters in Argentina complaining that she had cheapened the image of real-life Evita. I think the most amazing thing about her life story is that she came from nothing and rose to such power and had such a great influence on her country. And when I found out a little bit about her, I wanted to know more. And the more I knew, the more I wanted to know. Madonna and her co-star, Antonio Banderas, were forced to endure a rather intense press conference in Buenos Aires as journalists aired their disappointment in Madonna's portrayal of Evita. Well, I can't say I, I didn't feel um, hurt by them, but truthfully, I think that the negative remarks that people have made are based on things that people don't know and don't understand. And I urge you all to form your opinions after you see the movie. On a happier note, age 38, Madonna celebrated the more traditional role of motherhood. She gave birth to a baby girl named Lords Maria Sacconi Leon at the Good Samaritan Hospital in Los Angeles. The father, Carlos Leon, was Madonna's personal trainer. Earlier, Madonna said half jokingly on television that she planned to find a suitable candidate for the fatherhood gig by taking out a personal ad. I am here to ask you, to uh, beg of you, to plead with you, please, please, from the bottom of my heart, stop sending baby gifts to my home. There's no room. <laughs> Sometime later, she hit the promotional trail for the historical musical Evita. I was extremely passionate about it. I knew that it was a chance for me as an actress and a singer to do things I had never done before and to push myself and to grow. For years, Madonna sought recognition as an actress and finally her role in Evita won her the respect that she desired. It's widely agreed that Evita is Madonna's best film to date and that her success in the movie is actually due to the fact it's a musical. Her singing is naturally superior to her acting ability, so a movie in which she sings most of the time is logically a better vehicle for her. Madonna also won high praise from the film's director, Alan Parker. 
She's extraordinarily professional, amazingly hardworking, uh, always brilliantly prepared, uh, and she's extraordinarily special and charismatic. Evita's cast was on an all-time high at the Los Angeles premiere of the film. They went on to win an Oscar for Best Song and another 1997 Golden Globe Award for Best Motion Picture. With a production budget of 55 million US dollars, it cashed in over 140 million at the box office. Madonna then returned to the recording studio for the first time in five years. She recorded the album Ray of Light. The sound was heavily influenced by electronica, techno, trip hop and drum and bass, thereby updating her classic dance pop sound from the late 90s. This was another example of Madonna evolving and keeping a step ahead of the times. All I can tell you is that People seem very consumed with the idea of me reinventing myself. I, I disagree. What I've been doing, in my opinion, is I've been slowly revealing myself, taking off the layers and getting closer and closer to, um, to who I really am. And I think the difference is because of certain events in my life, um, I really, I think I really looked at myself in, in a more truthful way than I have in the past and faced myself in a more fearless way. Um, so if there is a difference, that is the difference. Madonna's move towards techno surprised many, but the combination of Madonna and producer William Orbit working together created the sound she was seeking. The, for the past couple of years, um, I've really been listening to a lot more sort of electronic, um, techno kind of music. But one of the things that I thought was interesting is that, um, in my opinion also, I don't really think that techno music is very emotional. Well, I like the sound of it, and I like the energy of it, there's nothing very personal or intimate about it. So my idea was that I wanted to take that sound and make it more personal and intimate. Um, and William Orbit has done several remixes for me in the past that I really liked and I just thought, well, why give him something when I'm finished with it? Why not start the process with him? And so I called him up to write music with me and it went very well. So then I decided when I heard the results, because the first song we wrote together was the first song on the record, Drowned World. Um, I just loved the way it sounded. and then I decided this is how I want my record to sound. Madonna returned to the movie set to work on the production of The Next Big Thing. She teamed up with real-life friend Rupert Everett to co-star in the film. Madonna played the part of Abby, who is unlucky in love and yearns to have a baby. She has a one-night stand with a gay landscape gardener and the couple agree to keep and raise the child together. Whilst filming, Madonna fell in love with Guy Ritchie, a British film director. Before too long, Madonna would be having another baby of her own with her newfound love. A pregnant Madonna arrived at the premiere of The Next Big Thing with Guy Ritchie in tow. It was announced that Guy Ritchie and Madonna would marry in 2000 and she gave birth to their son, Rocco John Ritchie, in the same year. After they wed, Ritchie began focusing his filmmaking on his wife. He directed her in the music video, What It Feels Like for a Girl, and numerous other films with varying success. Rocco's christening was held in the small town of Dornoch Sutherland in Scotland. Hundreds of locals gathered at Cathedral Square in the hope of seeing the couple on their last public appearance before their wedding the following day. Madonna was beaming as Guy Ritchie carefully carried their four-month-old son in his white christening robe.
Madonna was understandably nervous before her first British concert in seven years at the Brixton Academy in South London. The show pulled a world record webcast audience of nine million. A lucky 3,500 ticket holders, including celebrities and competition winners from all over the world were in attendance. Madonna's fans were simply blown away by her performance. Incredible, sensational, fantastic. Couldn't fault it, her voice was incredible. <laughs> it was just, I can't even recover, it's just it was incredible. Absolutely incredible. The exclusivity of the tickets turned the show into a public relations triumph. A 42-year-old Madonna was thrilled after the show, which was a wonderful platform to launch her next album, titled Music. Madonna was embroiled in more controversy when she cancelled the release of her video, American Life, out of sensitivity and respect for the armed forces. I think that Madonna in the past has used extreme things and shock value and encouraged uh, controversy for publicity. But I think in this instance, she genuinely doesn't want it released um, because of her support for the troops. I mean, she has said time and time again that she's anti-war and she's a pacifist. And the video is certainly an anti-war statement. The music video shows the ugly aspects of American culture. One scene featured Madonna tossing a grenade at a George Bush lookalike, who uses the grenade to light a cigar. In a written statement, Madonna said that the video was filmed before the Iraq war began, and she was blocking its release because she did not wish to offend anyone who might misinterpret its meaning. Well, I mean, Madonna's never been appropriate um, in pretty much anything she's ever done. And certainly the first thing she's going to attack are things that people think are inappropriate, which would be, for example, uh, the military in a music video. And in this particular video, the military is at a fashion show. I mean, this is like, you know, her very uh, unique way of expressing irony and of expressing her opinions. I mean, nothing, she's never been couth about anything um, that she decides to do. So that doesn't surprise me at all. Madonna reinvented herself again when she became a children's book author. She launched her book, The English Roses, in 100 countries and 30 languages in an unprecedented publishing blitz. She had clearly turned over a new leaf since she released her first book, Sex. Madonna had greatly toned down her image since becoming a mother and marrying Guy Ritchie. She set her studies into the mystical Kabbalah faith an offshoot of Judaism inspired her new venture. It is the widest release of any book in publishing history. Ladies and gentlemen, Madonna. Within hours of release, it went to number seven on Amazon.com's bestseller list, and in time became a New York Times bestseller. When I published um, the book Sex, I was at a point in my life where I was um, interested in pushing boundaries and um, uh, questioning um, society and dealing with taboo subjects and I was into showing off and uh, I was interested in myself essentially and uh, when I think about where and obviously I'm writing children's books now and I'm interested in children, and uh, I, I look back at the journey that I've made from then until now, and, and I'm, I'm actually quite uh, proud of my journey because um, the sex book, book was about me and saying, hey, look at me, and the, and the uh, children's books were about, um, hopefully, imparting some wisdom to people, to children. Madonna hit the red carpet in New York to promote her documentary, I'm Gonna Tell You a Secret. The film chronicles Madonna's life whilst on the road during her reinvention tour and reveals insights into her life and how she has changed in recent years. The Madonna on display in the film stands in great contrast to her first documentary of the same ilk, Truth or Dare, aka In Bed with Madonna, that was released in 1991. 
Well, I'm different. I mean, a lot's happened to me between that film and this film, so I've changed. My views in life have changed. Hopefully I've grown up, evolved. I have a family, I have children. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I hope that, that the movie is, is a reflection of that, of that evolution. The documentary also featured events on the tour such as dancer auditions, rehearsals, opening night and continues all the way through to the final show of the tour in Israel. The film premiered commercial free on MTV in the United States. Jason Akalam directed the documentary. The film is about everything that she thinks is important in life right now and it's a, it's a lot of spirituality and it's a lot about creativity and it's a lot about her thoughts and you know where she is today as a grown woman. I think, you know, th th this, the whole, this documentary is a big insight into so many areas of Madonna's life that I think people probably haven't seen yet. And even people that have followed her a long time don't really know what she's like with her family and what she's like with her band and what she's like with all those kind of things. I think she can be quite misunderstood for a lot of reasons. Ultimately, the film received mixed reviews, with Rolling Stone magazine stating that it lacks the dishy delights of the 1991 Truth or Dare doco whilst The Guardian newspaper described it as fascinating. The Reinvention World Tour was Madonna's sixth concert tour. Fans flocked to the Great Western Forum in Los Angeles from all over the United States for the opening night. Madiva, who was really a man named Chris, dressed up as his favorite icon in full makeup and French Baroque corset and lacy bra. I'm here to see Madonna on my, on my first stop of this tour. I'm going to 35 shows all across the country. The reinvention tour was a commercial success. Tickets were completely sold out as soon as dates and venues of the tour were announced, prompting the organizers to add more dates. After it wrapped up, the tour was named the highest grossing tour of 2004, earning 125 million US dollars with 900,000 fans in attendance. The following year, Madonna arrived at Narita International Airport in Japan to promote the release of her album, Confessions on the Dance Floor. The last time she visited Japan was way back in 1993. Warner Music Japan collected 200,000 signatures from fans in order to arrange Madonna's greatly anticipated visit. She was enthusiastically welcomed upon her arrival. Although her previous album, American Life, was filled with political messages, the material girl said it was time to lighten the mood. Uh, my last record was very political, but my documentary is, um, has some kind of political moments in it. And I think um, I was working on the record at the same time as making the movie and I wanted to make dance music as, a, as an antidote to the seriousness of the film that I was making. So, um, I don't know, I don't like to repeat myself, don't like to stay in the same place for too long, and I'm in the mood to dance, so I didn't think about it too much. It just, we started, uh, Stuart Price and I, the guy that I co-produced and co-wrote the record with, uh, we just started experimenting with things and hung up, which is the first single was the first song we did together and I said okay that's it I love this song and this is the direction I want the record to go in. Madonna's sustained longevity in the public arena is almost unprecedented. Other music icons such as Elvis and Jim Morrison eventually imploded as a result of the pressure and disorientation that comes with fame. I think it, it's hard for all of us. I think, you know, being famous and, you know, being in the public eye all the time and the pressure of that and the pressure of people's expectations can wear you out, you know what I mean? And, and, and I think a lot of people compensate for that kind of pressure by doing things that are self-destructive or, or they start to believe the hype, you know what I mean? And I do think you have to work at staying real and surround yourself with people who are. Madonna has always been a master at using the press to advance her own career, but now she also uses her fame for the greater good as an active humanitarian. One of her favorite charities is Spirituality for Kids. Um, I would say the thing that 
um, I'm very um, involved with is, you know, um, Spirituality for Kids. It's a it's a it's an organization that um, that uh, brings kids all over the world together to um, and you know kids from um, uh, challenged uh, living environments, um, kids from abused homes. Um, I think that's that's like my biggest passion and um, bringing kids together and and giving them tools to deal with the challenges of life and teaching them about human dignity and um, how to stand up for themselves and uh, I think that's that's a big one for me yeah Madonna took a field trip to Malawi in Africa in a bid to improve the lives of thousands of needy orphans she visited orphans and met with government officials and charity workers as part of a campaign to highlight the plight of some 900,000 orphans in this impoverished nation, where AIDS has destroyed many families. Madonna has pledged to donate around 3 million US dollars to help these children. Since January, I've been um, involved with a, a foundation called Raising Malawi, which essentially um, it was created to look after the needs of orphans. And um, and I, I guess I, I feel like it's, um, it's a, in, in Africa, in Malawi, for instance, there are over a million orphans. And I feel like if you added up all the orphans in, in Africa, I don't, I mean, I don't know what it would come to, but it's an astronomically high number. And, and I feel like it's a problem in the world that we need to pay attention to. And um, so I did it for two reasons, one to raise awareness and one to raise money. So moved by the plight of the children in Malawi, Madonna and husband Guy Ritchie attempted to adopt a little boy named David. The adoption caused a media furor due to objections within Malawi that Madonna and Guy Ritchie had not met the legal requirements of living in the country. The case dominated international headlines. I was doing it privately. Um, but you know, when you when you do an inter-country adoption, then the government knows about it, and once the government knows about it, it's not private anymore. So you know, it was my hope that it would be private, as private as possible. But the um, the press arrived, and they started snooping around, and you know, there was no way I could control that. Finally, the Malawian authorities waived local rules to grant Madonna the adoption. The child, David Banda arrived at London's Heathrow Airport in the arms of Madonna's personal assistant, accompanied by a bodyguard and police escort. It's nice, it's lovely. It's so oh, it's great to hold him and, and you know, he's just starting to, he, he's just starting to walk and um, just to see that, you know, the whole world being new again and to see the world through his eyes is, is wonderful and to see my children, my older children with him. Although David would be raised in a Western society in England, Madonna insisted that she wants David to be in touch with his Malawian heritage and customs. I definitely want Malawi and his culture and his roots and his background to be a part of his life. I want him to learn to speak to Chewa. Um, so I want to keep him connected to his, his culture and where he comes from. Madonna first visited Malawi in 2006. She said she enjoyed her time there, largely because most of the residents had no idea who she was. She was free to interact with the local people as a real person, rather than being perceived as a celebrity icon. They didn't, and that was wonderful. It was, in, in fact, it was really nice um, uh, when, when I first arrived to to not be bothered at all in that way and to be able to walk around through all the orphanages and no one had a clue who I was. In fact, no one knew that I was anybody until the photographer showed up. And even then, they didn't know who I was. They just saw there was photographers everywhere. And then people started to say my name and they didn't even know who I, you know, they'd never heard of Madonna. And in Chichewa, the word Madonna means distinguished white lady. So I think they got very confused. <laughs> Now that Madonna has David in her care, 
she wants to make a difference to more Malawian children's lives. Her plans include building an orphan care centre and to continue donating money to several other orphanages in the country. My short-term goals are to um, build an orphan care centre that um, will service and reach at least a thousand children and um, I'm also actively involved in funding several orphanages that already exist and um, building a Millennium Village with Jeffrey Sachs which deals with agricultural, medical, education, um, providing clean water and health care um, for, for the orphans. Um, and, you know, it's just the beginning. I mean, I, I want to do many other things, but, you know, I want to start slow, and, and I had to go to Malawi and get to know the lay of the land and, and see how best I could be of service. Madonna published another children's book, Too Good To Be True, with 100% of the proceeds benefiting Malawian orphans. She also wrote and produced the documentary, I Am Because We Are. The film tells the story of the orphans in Malawi and won several awards. Um, well, I, would, I want things to do well. I would be lying to say that I didn't want whatever I work on and would put my you know, time and effort into. I want people to um, enjoy what I do and, and to... Um, I want people to like what I do. I, that's the whole point of being in the entertainment business. Um, I'm, I'm a, but I, I have to, you know, I worked as hard as I could on my TV special, just as an example, and now all I can do is let it go and hope for the best. And, and you know, that goes for my children's book. You can only worry so much. Not one to lay idle, Madonna then released her hit album, Hard Candy, which featured the lead single, Four Minutes to Save the World, a collaboration with Justin Timberlake. The song achieved worldwide success by reaching number one in 21 countries, giving Madonna her 37th top 10 single. In turn, breaking the record previously held by Elvis Presley as the artist with the most top 10 hits. To a certain extent, I think the first single, Four Minutes to Save the World, is, you know, kind of the axis with which the rest of the album rotates off of, because there's a sense of urgency to it. And there's a sense of seriousness about it, but at the same time, there's a sense of fun and levity. So I think, I think you get that through the whole record. Madonna traveled to Paris, France, to perform at the Olympia Theater to promote the new album. About 1,500 people managed to secure seats for the promotional concert that lasted 35 minutes. Despite approaching 50, Madonna strutted her stuff with a crew of hip-hop dancers in a pair of lace-up boots with six-inch heel. In terms of creativity, the first place that I started expressing myself as an artist was through dance, and that's completely and utterly connected to music. So for me, becoming a songwriter and a singer and a performer was a perfect segue from dancing. And I think that even when I get involved in film projects, I always think of them in a very musical way. I think about what, what music's gonna be scoring the scene. Music inspires me to write a scene. Um, so uh, I, I feel like music is still very much an integral part of every aspect of my creativity. Few artists have such a diverse range of talents. Madonna is an accomplished author, producer, actress, and fashion trendsetter just to name a few. But creating music is her greatest love. I'm, I'm always gonna wanna write music and I just, I just feel like music, music speaks to people in a way and that, that no, other, um, no other art form can. And it is, in my opinion, um, the most accessible art form. So yeah, you could say it's my first love, yes. <laughs> The premiere of I Am Because We Are, Madonna's documentary about orphans in Malawi, was staged at the Tribeca Film Festival in New York. The film received positive reviews in the media. The Times gave it four out of five stars and wrote, 
This rich material makes for a completely absorbing film. Well, it was important for me to make this film because when I heard about the story, when I heard about the hardships that all the children in Malawi were experiencing, and I understood the details of, of their suffering, I sort of couldn't... I mean, you hear stories all the time about things going on around the world and you feel crushed by them, but there was something about this story. I didn't. I don't know why, but it just was that moment in my in my life where I said, "Okay, I've got to do something." So I jumped in, and I ended up going on the journey of a lifetime. The documentary describes the journey that Madonna embarked on when exploring the lives of children who have been orphaned due to AIDS and the suffering that they have endured. She leads the audience through many heart-wrenching stories that ultimately remind us of how interconnected we are. This project is closer to my heart than anything I've ever done. Yeah. Yeah. And why? Um, because, because it's about children, and because it's about children in need, and because by, um, through making this film, I met my son. So there's a lot of importance attached to it. Yeah. Having a documentary under her belt, Madonna set her sights even higher. She made her feature film directorial debut on the production of Filth and Wisdom. When Madonna asked husband Guy Ritchie for advice about directing the film, he told her the key was to exude confidence. Confidence has never been in short supply for the queen of reinvention, and she enjoyed making the film so much, she was now considering making a career of it. The movie was unveiled at the Berlin Film Festival and was the hottest ticket in town. Well, the movie is really about two things. It's about the duality of life, and it's also about the struggle with that duality. And filth and wisdom is the ultimate duality. It sounds like they're at complete opposite ends of the spectrum, but in fact, they're not that far apart. And I think that what I was trying to say with the film is that you can learn and find enlightenment um, in either place. You can find wisdom and filth and vice versa. The movie focuses on a character called AK, an aspiring musician, and Holly, a ballerina, who reluctantly becomes a stripper. Their individual stories are close to Madonna's heart. If I look back to the beginning of my career, I mean, I, could, I, can, I can recall those moments of struggle like it was yesterday. And there are aspects of Holly, Juliet, and AK's struggle that I could relate to completely. And I could access that memory and put it into the story. The Cinema Society and Dolce & Gabbana hosted the New York premiere of Filth & Wisdom at the Sunshine Cinema. Madonna hit the red carpet solo without Guy Ritchie and seemed at ease when talking to the press. I've been wanting to make a film for years and uh, I just decided to stop moaning about it and do it. Yeah. A-list friends and fans of Madonna flooded the downtown theatre for the premiere. Eugene Hutz, who played the part of AK, spoke highly of Madonna's ability as a director. Very good, very uh, enthusiastic, very uh, upbeat, and uh, very uh, scrupulous about most of the details, and uh, also knowing where to let go and let somebody do their own thing, you know. Naomi Watts, Brooke Shields, Jason Briggs, and Erica Christensen were all there to lend their support. But Erica, who is a huge fan of Madonna, struggled to choose her favorite song. Um, that's so difficult. The most difficult question ever. What do you sing in the show? Which, <laughs> like Lucky Star. That's a good way to figure it out. Probably, I guess, I would have to go old, old school. Um, yeah, 80s Madonna. 
Um, I think Like a Virgin is probably one of my favorites, I'd, ha I'd have to say. And I really love her, um, um, I love what's happened with her since she's been studying Kabbalah. I think that's really done something quite extraordinary to her. And I think what she's done is come out to a lot of people and um, sort of the, the, spoken about the last taboo, which is people's spirituality, and I think it's really important. Following an emotional divorce with Guy Ritchie, Madonna traveled back to Malawi to adopt three-year-old Chifundo Mercy James. Madonna won permission to adopt a second child from Malawi after the country's highest court overturned an earlier decision that rejected her application. The Chief Justice said, Madonna's commitment to disadvantaged children and the funds that she has raised for the Malawi charity serving 25,000 orphan children should have been taken into account. He also said, Mercy could either stay at the orphanage without the love of a family and live with the possibility of destitution or be with Madonna, where she is assured of love. Every child has the right to love. Clearly, Madonna has plenty of love to give to her young family. Madonna's fascinating career spans decades. Her journey has not always been an easy one, but this strong-minded woman has found unrivaled success through self-belief and determination. I know that, you know, I've, I've earned the position that I'm in as a celebrity, as an artist, as a, you know, a singer. Um, and that came through a lot of hard work and, and it was, you know, it's had a lot of ups and downs, and, you know, um, I know the meaning of hard work, and I know that anything that's important you have to earn, and comes with struggle. If anything, the struggles in her personal and business life have only made her stronger. But now, in her 50s, for how much longer can she remain on the top of the charts? then there is no reason why her career can't go into her 60s. I mean, when you think of Madonna when she emerged in the early 80s, you know, with Holiday, um, nobody would have believed that in, in, in 25 years' time she would still be having number one hits. So it's, it's, it's no less remarkable that in 10 years' time she would be doing the same thing. Few before her have sustained the longevity of her career, but the material girl remains optimistic that she will continue whilst the passion still burns. I don't see it coming anytime soon, but you know, you never know. If I stop loving what I do, that's, that's when I stop doing it. While she remains adored and revered by her legions of fans worldwide, there seems to be no reason for her success to diminish. But does she have any regrets about her life? Um, no big regrets. I think if you know, I get a bit freaked out by some of my hairstyles and a few outfits, uh, some hideous photographs, I don't know, things like that. Maybe a few guys I dated, but nothing too big, right? Well, the same regrets we all have. If hairstyles and bad dates are her greatest concerns, she has enjoyed a happy life that continues to evolve. She is a woman that has changed the entertainment industry forever. I would like people to think of me as a revolutionary. Few women have had as much power in the entertainment industry as Madonna, and the Queen of Pop doesn't look like she's slowing down anytime soon.